the Standing Stones. Written by Maid Waiter. Read and adapted for audio by Tardis Hand. If some day you should visit the island of Sodor, you may see Bertie the bus working far from Thomas's branch line. On rare occasions, the Sodor Bus Company is hired out for special tours around the island, where visitors are taken to historic sites such as the Mid Sodor Railway or Olmsted Castle. Usually, the other buses are given this duty, but sometimes Bertie is asked to take the tourists. Bertie is always happy to explore more of Sodor, but there is one historic site that he doesn't like going to at all. The Standing Stones of Kildane are a very ancient part of Sodor's history. Nobody really knows much about them, but visitors are often very intrigued by them, and the site had become quite popular over the years. Bertie never liked going to the stones. The road was narrow and hadn't been very well maintained. Not to mention the stones themselves. For some strange reason, Bertie never liked looking at them. He always felt uncomfortable there, and that he wasn't welcome. One grey and wet afternoon, Bertie was telling Thomas about the stones at Fafarquhar Station. <sighs> I'm glad they're closing the road up there, sighed Bertie. Why are they closing it? Thomas asked. Well, the council have decided to widen and repair the road leading up to the stones to make it more accessible. I've also heard they'll be starting the restoration of an old church further up the road, explained Bertie. Thomas then smiled. If ever there was to be any construction done on Sodor, he knew the pack would be at the heart of the operation. Miss Jenny had been given the contract to help with the restoration of the old church and the widening of the road. Each morning, Nelson would bring Oliver and Byron up to Kildane, while Jack, Alfie, Buster and Patrick made their own way to the site. Byron would use his blade to extend the length of the road while Patrick prepared the concrete. When the concrete had been laid, Buster would roll carefully over it. Oliver, Alfie and Jack would shift any debris from the ruined church and help dig holes for the new wall surrounding the church. It's nice to be out working again, said Jack cheerfully as he scooped up some collapsed bricks from the church. <sighs> Pity the weather is so wet, sighed Oliver. I'm glad I've got caterpillar tracks to help me grip. Well, I'm glad I got tyres. When I slip on the wet grass, I can get covered in mud. <laughs> Giggled Alfie. The three diggers laughed and continued working happily in the wet field. Later, Oliver was having his grabber fitted to help remove some of the weakened roof supports. The men were attaching the grabber in the field where the stones were, so as not to disturb the other working machines. Once it was fitted and had been checked over, the excavator began to crawl steadily back to work. Suddenly, Oliver felt a pain in his caterpillar tracks and began to slide down the field. Look out! He tooted as he tried desperately to grip the soil. With a bump, Oliver hit one of the stones, which fell right into the mud. How did this happen, Oliver? Asked his banksman as he ran over. I don't know, sir, stuttered a perplexed Oliver. His banksman checked him all over. One of your wheels must have come off. I'll have a look for it. We'll have you back to work once it's fitted again. This made Oliver feel a little better, although he felt uneasy being so close to the stones. His banksman and some of the workmen looked around the field for Oliver's wheel, but they couldn't find it anywhere. <sighs> it's no good, sighed Oliver's banksman. We'll have to send you back to the yards and order a new wheel for your tracks. 
In the meantime, Kelly can help remove the roof supports. So, at the end of the day, they carefully winched Oliver out of the field and onto Nelson's low loader. He and Byron were taken back to the yards. Jack, Patrick, Alfie and Buster slowly made their way home too. <sighs> Poor Oliver. I hope he gets his tracks mended soon, said Jack in a concerned tone. His tracks are usually so reliable. I've never seen them break before, pondered Alfie. Some strange things happened to us today too, interjected Buster. At one point my fire went out while I was rolling the concrete. Not to mention some of the workmen's tools went missing too. <sighs> the only thing I'm missing now is my favourite spot in the yard. Hurry it up, Buster, groaned Patrick, who was stuck behind the steamroller. As they made their way down the new road, Jack peered over and looked at the standing stones, his eyes fixated on the fallen one. He felt an uneasy feeling in the pit of his motor. The next day, Kelly came to help remove and replace the roof supports. It took a little while as the wind and rain made it hard for the crane to concentrate, but eventually the job was done. A fine job as usual, Kelly, commented his banksman. You've earned yourself a rest. Off you go. Thank you, sir, smiled Kelly, his cheeks flushed from all the heavy lifting. He rolled away to join the other machines. While the men were on their tea break, the machines were chattering amongst themselves. I think that these stones are haunted said Jack in a low voice, glancing over at them. <laughs> Nonsense, hissed Byron. They're just stones. Stones can't be haunted. I once heard about a boulder that wrecked a whole railway, said Alfie excitedly. <laughs> I think it's fun working on a haunted site. Kelly chuckled sagely. <laughs> the site isn't haunted. There's just been a series of inconveniences. Now I think it's best we put this spooky stone story behind us. They all agreed, except for Alfie, who wouldn't stop going on about the supernatural for the rest of the day. Dark clouds had formed above when it was time to leave. The vehicles all began to depart from the site and make their way home through the rain. Alfie was rolling cheerfully behind Kelly, when suddenly there came a sputtering noise and the little digger stopped. Alfie, what's going on? asked Kelly. I'm out of fuel, shrieked Alfie. But, but I had half a full tank. His banksman came to check him over. Mm, we'll have to leave you here overnight, I'm afraid. Alfie gulped. He now realised he had broken down right by the stones. Here? Uh, overnight? stuttered Alfie. Don't worry, Alf, called Jack. We'll be back first thing in the morning. <laughs> we'll make grumpy old Isabella bring you some fuel. This made Alfie feel a little better, although he began to have a sinking feeling as he watched the others roll home, the rain beginning to sting his face. The storm raged across the island. The fierce winds ripped tiles off roofs and even derailed some rolling stock. Thankfully, it had passed by morning, and the pack were hurrying back up to Alfie. When they arrived at the site, Alfie was shuddering violently and had his eyes clenched shut. He seemed to be muttering in a harsh tone. Jack raced over to him. <laughs> Alfie, <laughs> are you all right? <laughs> it was all it was Jack. I can hear their screams, their desperate cries for help, but I couldn't help them, Jack, I couldn't help them, sobbed Alfie. Jack and the pack were stunned into silence. Miss Jenny approached Alfie and placed her hand on his tyre. We're going to refuel you and then I'm sending you home, she said in a soft voice. You're in no condition to work today. Alfie didn't answer. All he could hear was the shrieking he heard last night. 
he was sure he'd never be able to unhear it. After Isabella escorted Alfie home, Jack rolled over to Kelly. Do you think what Alfie said is true? About the screaming? He asked in a hushed tone. I've known Alfie for years, and I've never seen him so upset. I don't know what he had, but I believe him. Do you think it has something to do with that? Jack asked again, peering over at the stones. It certainly does seem that way. And Kelly rolled away to start work. The pack worked in complete silence. They were all thinking about Alfie. With Alfie and Oliver out of action, Jack had to work all by himself. The poor front loader was soon exhausted. He began finding it hard to keep his eyes open. He had just lowered his bucket and was about to go for a small sleep when he heard something. It was a bleating noise. It sounded distressed. Is that a lamb? He thought to himself. The bleating continued, growing progressively louder. Jack rolled steadily towards the source of the sound which led him right behind the church. When he peered around the corner, Jack gasped in horror. There was no lamb, but instead sat Miss Jenny's Jeep, burning brightly. Fire! cried Jack as he ran off to alert the others. The men ran over and saw the burning Jeep. Jack's banksman ran down the lane to phone the fire brigade. Jack and the others sat at the bottom of the road, watching the black smoke rise from behind the church. Eventually, the fire brigade arrived and managed to extinguish the jeep, but it was now a charred wreck. The fire had also damaged the back of the church, leaving a large black mark on the wall. Miss Jenny was thankful nobody had been hurt, but her confidence had been shaken tremendously. With much regret, the pack abandoned the site, as did the council. The pack had all been rather disturbed by the ordeal, particularly Miss Jenny, who confided in Kelly that night in the yards. I just don't understand how my jeep got behind the church. I left it parked by the stones, interrupted Kelly. Miss Jenny nodded and walked sadly away. The story of what happened soon spread, and soon the standing stones were abandoned. Tourists and residents were now unnerved by them and wanted nothing to do with them. Every now and then, that feeling of dread would return if an engine or road vehicle ever looked directly at them while passing. I think it's best that the stones are left alone. Don't you?